वेलकम स्टूडेंट दिस लेक्चर इज फॉर क्लास टेंथ दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर वन लाइफ प्रोसेस दिस इज द फोर्थ पार्ट ओके ऑल द पार्ट दैट इज फर्स्ट सेकेंड एंड थर्ड विल ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड यू कैन वॉच फ्रॉम दैट ओके सो नाउ कम टू दैट द टॉपिक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस लेक्चर नंबर वन डेफिनेशन ऑफ रेस्पायरेशन टाइप्स ऑफ रेस्पायरेशन रेस्पायरेशन इन प्लांट रेस्पायरेशन इन एनिमल्स रेस्पायरेटरी सिस्टम इन of man physiology of respiration okay number first that is definition of respiration you already know till class 7th that is respiration definition okay but here is some changes okay respiration is the process in which breakdown of glucose in the presence or absence of oxygen and release energy okay breakdown of glucose here the breakdown of glucose it will be in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen okay it will occur in all the living organism all the microorganism which are present on the surface of earth okay so it is a catabolic process that i already told you that is a, it is a catabolic process in the first lecture in catabolic process it means that is breakdown of glucose in the simpler one you see that already okay biochemical process including all the organism ha huh, the energy which is released during this process that is in the form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate which are used by various activities okay next one is type of respiration first i am going to tell you about that types of respiration is of basically they are of two types number one is aerobic respiration aerobic aerobic means in the presence of oxygen it it take place in the presence of oxygen maximum amount of energy will be released in this aerobic respiration that is approximately 36 atp energy will be released it is it occur in the normal condition okay it take place in the mitochondria it is not in the cytoplasm because when any respiration will take place in the presence of oxygen it will be take place in the mitochondria and if it was take if it was in absence of oxygen it will be take in the cytoplasm okay maximum amount of energy this process equation equation you see that this one is the glucose molecule combined with oxygen okay so it break down into carbon dioxide water and release energy that in the form of atp approximately 36 atp in large amount of energy will be releases okay second one is it anaerobic respiration and aerobic and means no it means in this respiration oxygen doesn't does not involve okay it is absence in respiration take place in the absence of oxygen cytoplasm that I already told you less amount of energy will release okay ha huh, the substrate the substrate then it means the product which will of which we are obtained that is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide lactic acid and alcohol first thing that i am going to tell you very clearly when we do mountain climbing it means that uh, when we do any exercises heavy heavy exercises cycling boxing mountain climbing it means uh, the activity which we are done in the lack of oxygen okay okay in that the glucose molecule is break down in the lack of oxygen to form lactic acid okay that lactic acid deposited in our muscle okay that's why our muscle get fatigue okay our muscle get fatigue and causing muscle cramp okay clear alcohol alcohol is pres uh, alcohol will be um, form by the action of yeast in the absence of oxygen by the breakdown of glucose molecule here is the reaction you see that very clearly lack of oxygen lactic acid form and energy will that is th this one is glucose molecule in the absence of oxygen okay in the presence of yeast to form ethyl alcohol there is c2h5oh okay and release carbon dioxide and energy approximately 2 atp energy will be released okay this process is called as fermentation because in maximum examination the question will become that what is the difference between fermentation and aerobic respiration okay so you have to write from that now next one is see the flow chart flow chart is very clearly very simple first the glucose molecule you see that in glucose molecule six carbon is there okay it means one glucose molecule six carbon is there first it was broken down into 
pyruvate or pyruvic acid this pyruvic acid have two molecule three carbons it means three three carbons in the pyruvate that is also called as pyruvic acid okay firstly you see that in mitochondria it will be carbon dioxide water then in energy basically 36 april this is the aerobic respiration not anaerobic respiration this is in cytoplasm lactic acid okay energy this one is fermentation CH5OH plus carbon dioxide plus energy that is 2 ATP. This flow chart, if you have learned, okay, then easily one question will be come from this. Okay. Now, next one is respiration in plant. You all know that in respiration, leaves leaves have stomata through that respiration will take place. And uh, stems have so many pores that is called as lenticels. Okay. So through that respiration will take place by the and roots there is general general surface respiration will take place ha huh. maximum in maximum uh, maximum people will told that does not sleep under does not, not sleep under the tree during the night time because at night time plant respire so in respiration maximum amount of carbon dioxide will be released okay so that's why we will not sleep under the tree do it in the night time okay plants so aerobic respiration leaf stem depressed root oxygen from the atmosphere to the see that instrumental and lenticels in stems general body surface ha huh, this one is exam this question will become in the examination that is the last point you see that very carefully now respiration in animals animals there are so many animals which are present on the surface of earth whether it was hydra hydra means unicellular organism or whether it was elephant or the big organism or multicellular organism all the animals have respired okay it, except endoparasite the parasite which are present in our in the body inside the body that like tinea solium okay ascaris they are despised anaerobically general body surface by simple diffusion like protista sponge hydra skin say okay and lida amphibians trachea is mean long tube like structure insects and millipores and tripods gills yet of that you know basically aquatic animals like prawn missiles fish tadpole of larval lungs human being and all the reptiles and birds okay now here respiratory system of man you see first you see the diagram of respiratory system okay this one is the diagram here is called nasal pore okay the pore which are present in our nose that is called nasal pore and the cavity which are present is called as a nasal passage or nasal cavity when air in, in will enter inside the nas nasal passage okay it will come into pharynx this one is the pharynx this one is the larynx after that trachea ha huh, one trachea is also called as windpipe trachea have so many uh, ring like structure on their wall basically they are cartilaginous rings okay or bony ring okay their work is to protect the trachea and uh, trachea for collapsing during the expiration forcefully expiration trachea is divided into two branches that is called as bronchus bronchus also have the cartilaginous ring which protect uh, to for in collapse collapsing this one is bronchiolus yani bronchus are divided into so many branches that is called as bronchiolus if there are so many balloon like or sac like structure present on the tip of bronchiola that is called as alveoli alveoli is a unit of lung that thing i told you alveoli is the unit of lung because alveoli help in the exchanging of gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide okay so when we see one alveoli you can see that this one is this is bronchus it is divided into so many part that is bronchiolus this one is alveoli your alveolar sac okay now see the respiratory tract tract means the pathway where the uh, airs will enter and it will first that is first nasal pore second one is nasal cavity third is pharynx then larynx then trachea that is windpipe after that is our bronchus bronchiolus and last one is alveoli okay in same direction this through this okay all the gases will pass next one is about human lung human lungs first i will told you very clearly that a pair of lung are present in our body left lung is little bit smaller because the heart is present 
okay where the heart is present is called as cardiac notch okay a pair of lung is present thoracic cavity occupy most of the thoracic cavity thoracic ribs the cavity which are pre, uh, around covered by the ribs that is called a thoracic cavity or the cage is called a thoracic cage okay uh, protected by the bony cartilage cage basically called as ribs ha huh. one thing this one is the most important point that lungs is covered with a mem with a membrane or layer that is called a pleural membrane okay and in between that it means pleural membrane and uh, lungs membrane there is a gap is called as pleural gap okay or pleural space in that a liquid is present that is called as pleural fluid this pleural fluid okay have so many function number one function is is help to protect the lung from mechanical injury or shock okay lubricate help in lubrication for softening of lungs second one it keep lung moist for proper functioning a left lung is slightly smaller that i already told you that the right lung due to the presence of cardiac notch where the heart is present cardiac means heart lungs never collapse during the forcefully expiration due to the presence of residual volume the a volume which are present in that two lungs that is called as residual vo volume when we forcefully expire after that that lungs will be not collapse because due to the presence of this residual volume okay cartilaginous piece uh, cartilaginous ring that i already told you about present at the trachea or bron and bronchus and bronchioles which help to protect the lungs from forcefully expire uh, collapsing from forcefully expiration tidal volume now these now these points are most important not for this class but in the upper for the upper classes okay tidal volume amount of air in normal breath when we do the normal breath 0.5 liter okay we take air that is inhaled that is called as tidal volume okay next one expiratory reserve volume that is erv the amount air that can exhale out in normal exhale is mean normal expiration that we will do that exhalation that is about 1.2 liter inspiratory reserve volume amount that is further inhaled after a normal inhalation normal inhalation after the normal inhalation we can take 3.1 liter of air inside our lungs now next one is vital capacity vital capacity maximum amount of air that can be moved in and out of the lung in a single respiratory cycle in a single cycle in a single inhalation and exhalation the maximum amount of air in and out that is called as what vital capacity here you can write that vital capacity is equal to inspiratory reserve volume tidal volume and inspire expiratory reserve volume okay so that if you write the formula to so vital capacity is equal to expiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume okay inspiratory capacity volume of air that can be inhaled in addition to normal exhalation in normal when we do the normal exhalation after that we will add some we will ex exhale okay if we will exhale some maximum air that is called as respiratory capacity that is ic it will be write that tidal volume plus irv you say functional reserve residual capacity of functional reserve volume that is frc volume of air remaining after the normal exhalation now if we do the normal exhalation the air which are the exhalation that is 2.4 liter okay so we can write that e rv that is expiratory reserve volume plus rv that is residual volume okay total lung capacity it means how much air that lungs will be uh, it that is about 6 liter volume of air remaining after the normal exhalation that is 6 liter okay you can write it like this reserve volume plus in expiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus irv so you have to write it and write in the tabulated form okay and write the formulas also like like vital capacity yani vc is equal to erv plus tv plus irv okay so you have to write it and add it in a page forced expiratory volume volume forcefully expire how much air that we will forcefully expire that is 4.1 to 5.5 liters okay now some mechanism of breathing mechanism of breathing okay we can study in two steps number one is inspiration or inhalation inhalation means taking air inside the lung 
inside the body okay this active process it one is active one okay it means energy energy does not energy will required in this it is inspiration and oxygen enter in our body inspiration process inhalation or intake of air in that process okay the volumes of lung will be increase first thing second one thing the diaphragm which are present just below the lungs is going downward the ribs or the chest will become outside okay these are the changes okay second one is expiration expiration is removal of air removal of air if we remove the carbon dioxide from our body okay then diaphragm will be go up upward ribs or uh, will be go downward the lungs capacity will be crease decrease okay is a passive process is mean no energy will be in or expiration is a process inhalation of breathing out so the carbon dioxide is expel out of the body it takes place by elastic recoil of diaphragm and relaxation of intercostal muscle okay you see the diagram this diagram you see that in that this one is the inspiration you see that in inspiration diaphragm will be go downward ribs will be go upside okay a volume of thoracic increase okay now second one is you see the expiration in expiration diaphragm will be go upward okay thoracic of volume will be decrease ribs will be go downward is in normal position will become okay now next one is external internal respiration this one is most important because the question will be arise from that external external all external internal respiration is only based on the movement of oxygen be remind okay only it was based on the movement of oxygen okay first the oxygen will come inside the lungs in the alveoli you see that transfer of oxygen from alveoli to blood vessels because so many blood vessels just like capillaries artery or veins are present suppose that this one is the alveoli this one is alveoli okay the blood vessels is present this one is blood vessel so many bloods are there in that so if it take oxygen so oxygen will transfer into the blood vessels so transfer of oxygen from alveoli to the blood vessel is called external respiration now internal respiration after that blood vessel is goes into the any muscles or body cells okay we transfer of oxygen from blood vessels to the muscle or body cell this one is the body cell transfer of oxygen is that is called as what is internal respiration it is also called as tissue respiration okay internal respiration is also called as what tissue respiration now next one you some key points that you have to remember it breathing is only and only in and out of the gases okay painful breathing is called dyspnea normal breathing is euphonia 750 million alveoli are present in human lungs okay man breathe 12 to 14 times at at the rest respiratory pigment is hemoglobin because when hemoglobin combined with oxygen is called oxyhemoglobin and when it combined with carb carbon dioxide is called as carboxyhemoglobin okay process of breathing and swallowing of food cannot be together okay rate of breathing is minimum when a person is sleeping larynx is also called as voice box one thing is that in in man uh, um, uh, protuberance is coming from uh, the neck region is called as adam's apple okay aerobic anaerobic respiration take place in all microorganism except elodia elodia is a microorganism in which no aerobic respiration will take place okay some questions here are some questions question number 1 what is respiratory substrate okay what are the stages of respiration question number 3 is there what are the characteristics of idle respiratory surface how do gaseous action take place in the lower plant and last one is breathing and respiration are not the synonymous why so this is all about the fourth part okay stay home and keep learning through this thank you